Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sarah Says Hi and today I'm doing another blood sugar testing on some products. Today I'm going to be comparing two products. A keto meal replacement, which is basically, I feel like it's a protein shake, versus the standard protein shake that is not typically advertised as keto friendly or low carb. I did order a variety pack of this brand a couple of weeks ago. This is Keto Chow. And I decided that the best thing would be to compare it with a vanilla because this one is vanilla flavored and this whey powder that I have is vanilla flavored. My very first trying of this sampler packet, it was a strawberry flavored and I was not impressed at all. I really wanted to like the product, but the taste was just god awful that it was killing me just to get it down. I'm sorry if some of you like keto chow, I'm just basing it off of that one flavor. If this one also tastes bad, then I don't know what to tell you, so we'll find out today. I was actually really surprised by the macros in keto chow because even though it's supposed to be keto friendly, it has more carbohydrates than the whey protein brand that I had been using for several years. This one is supposed to be advertised as keto because it's supposed to be a higher fat um, ratio than some of the other whey proteins. Plus this is marketed as a meal replacement. But really, I don't know why they're calling this a meal replacement because all they're doing is asking you to add fat to it. You could add fat to your protein powder and you would have essentially the same thing. This is the macros for this one, the keto chow. The serving size is one pouch and the calories is 118, which doesn't seem like much, so it doesn't really seem like a meal replacement at that point if you're just using the base. The total carbohydrates is 6.13 grams. That's pretty high, I would say, for um, you know any kind of shake meal replacement. As I was editing, I realized I forgot to add how much protein it has. It has 25.71 grams. The sodium is 853 milligrams. So you're getting quite a bit of sodium, you know, which you're probably not gonna find that in the whey protein brands. They are advertising net carbs on this. So they're saying that the net carbs on it is 0 0.43 grams. They're saying that there's five grams, 5.7 grams of fiber and only 0 0.43 grams of sugars. Now the sugar that they are using in this is sucralose, uh, magnesium mol molate, so you are getting some electrolytes in here. Potassium chloride, again, more electrolytes. You're getting some vitamins. They're advertising this as a meal replacement and to do so, they want you to add an oil of your choice or milk. So they're saying here in the directions that if you add one fourth of a cup of avocado oil, that's gonna bring the calories up to 600, which would make it more like a meal replacement. Of course, the carbohydrates, everything else is gonna stay the same. The only thing is the fat. The fat will be increased to 54 grams of fat. That's quite a bit of fat for one meal. Um, so I kind of question on why they would advertise to use one fourth of a cup. I could see maybe putting a tablespoon or two tablespoons in, but a fourth of a cup, yeah, that's a lot of fat. The other thing is it says if you don't add avocado oil, if you just added half a cup of heavy cream, then the calories would be 525 calories. The fat would be 43 grams, 43.96 grams. Again, you know, it's up there in the 50 gram range. That will bring your carbs up to 9.43 because there are carbs and heavy cream. They recommend that when you mix this, you mix it with 14 ounces of water and they're actually saying that you should chill it for 30 minutes. I don't have time to chill it, so I'm just gonna blend it in my Nutribullet with a little bit of ice. And I think just for the testing, I'm going to put two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream in it. Our other product that we're going to be testing is the Muscle Farm Combat Protein Powder, also in vanilla. Um, this is not advertised as keto friendly or low carb. Let's see what we're getting in here. We have 130 calories for one scoop. You have 1.5 grams of fat. So it's lacking fat, which is not bad. You can easily add fat to it. The sodium is 150 milligrams versus this one had 800 and something milligrams. So quite a bit less of sodium, but you could add your own sodium to your shake. It has four carbohydrates, one dietary fiber, um, two sugars and 25 grams of protein. There's potassium in here, 
two forms of potassium. There's no vitamins, so that's one advantage of the keto chow is that you're getting a lot of B vitamins in it. So again, when I mix this, when it comes to that time, I'm going to mix it with, I'm gonna follow the same recipes. They're gonna be mixed with the appropriate amounts of water. There's going to be a little bit of ice, and then there's going to be two tablespoons of heavy cream added to both shakes just to make the fat more on an even kill. So for today's blood sugar testing, the plan is to do the base test right now. I will drink the shake. When I finish the last sip of the shake, I will then check my blood sugar again one hour after finishing each drink. We will compare how high of a blood sugar reading that we're getting one hour afterwards. The idea here is that if something is causing a large blood sugar reading, then you're probably getting a pretty substantial size insulin spike, which is what we don't want. This reason why we're eating a ketogenic diet is to avoid getting those insulin spikes. But the first things first, we have to start with our base blood sugar reading, which you all know that I love. Okay, so the base reading is 91. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the shake. Okay, back with the shake. And all I did was I followed the instructions, so I mixed 14 ounces of filtered water. I added one large ice cube and I added two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. I blended it. It is very frothy right now. I'm gonna give my first taste test on this. It's very thick, very, hmm. It's very artificial vanilla flavored. Um, I actually think that this is a step up in flavor from the strawberry. I would recommend this one over the strawberry. So I need to hurry up and get this down. So it is definitely thicker than a whey protein shake. Alarm set for 3.06 p.m. I'll see you back in an hour for the next blood sugar reading. Okay guys, it has been an hour. Back to check the blood sugar again. Okay, it's 97. So that is a six milligram deciliter rise. And the 97 is going to be our base now for the next protein powder comparison. So this is the Muscle Farm Combat Protein Powder and I had mixed it with 10 ounces of water. The instructions say between eight and 12 fluid ounces of water. And then it has two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream and one large ice cube and then one scoop of the powder. I blended it in the Nutribullet. It is a little foamy, frothy at the top. Um, already you can tell it's much thinner looking than the Keto Chow. This is interesting because I always have this on hand, but I've never drank it by itself. And I would mix it like half a scoop of the protein powder with my nut milk and make it a protein milk so that I would get more protein if I was gonna have a bowl of cereal. Or I've mixed it into blended coffees or something. I've never drank it by itself. So I can honestly say I don't really like the taste of this. I do think the Keto Chow vanilla flavor has a slightly better taste than this one. This, however, does taste sweeter to me, and they're both made with sucralose. This one had less carbohydrates, so I'm wondering if this one is gonna be the one that spikes the sugar. Mm. Yeah, that's very artificial flavoring. It is a lot thinner to get down. I do want to comment before I finish this. The keto chow one is supposed to be advertised as a meal replacement. Um, I was feeling really hungry, even though I only had an hour between finishing the shake and doing that blood test. I felt full after drinking it, but I would say about 15 minutes ago, I was, I was getting really hungry. My stomach wasn't growling, but I could eat. 
And even right now, as I'm drinking this, I still feel hungry. Almost done. I'm just gonna go for it, just gonna chug it. Alexa, set an alarm for 4.17. I will see you guys back in one hour to do a post one hour blood glucose test and with my final word. I'm back for our final blood test. Okay, so it's 101. So that is four. It went up by four milligrams deciliters versus the keto chow had a difference of six. So um, I'm sure that has to do with the carb count difference between the two because keto chow was six and the combat one was only four grams of carbs. So I'm sure that's really what it is. So my final thoughts on these two products is if you're going to choose one or the other, I would choose the Keto Chow. Just because you get a little bit more benefits, there is the um, sodium aspect, there's potassium in there, so you are getting a little bit more electrolytes with it. You're also getting the benefits of having all of those B vitamins in there, stuff that the Combat did not have. I will go ahead and tell you the cost difference between these two. the combat whey protein, that was a two pound container. So for two pounds right now, it's $24.50 on Amazon. So that is roughly 90 cents per serving. There are 27 servings in a two pound container. For keto chow, um, it doesn't say how many pounds it is. It just says it's a big bag and it says that that is a 21 serving bag. And that one, the cost is $64. So you're looking at $3.04 per serving. Yee. It's quite a big difference there. So if you're looking more for something more affordable, I would just look at the whey proteins and skip the keto chow altogether. If you don't mind paying the extra money to have the convenience of having your sodium and potassium and magnesium, your electrolytes basically, already included into the mix, plus the benefit of having the B vitamins, then yeah, you can go ahead and splurge for the Keto Chow. The Keto Chow does offer something that they have for the subscribe and save. If you subscribe, which means after 21 days, they ship you a new bag, um, then that one was a $60, so it'll save you $4 to do it that way. The downside is trying to find out what flavor is good because like I said, the strawberry one that I tried was terrible, but the vanilla one that I just tried today was not bad, it was doable. I will say that the same thing is, could probably happen with the combat powder. I didn't care for the vanilla, but I have the chocolate one and I have drinking the chocolate one straight by itself after a workout and I enjoy the chocolate one. So you have to kind of play around with flavors and tastes. The bonus thing about the Muscle Farm whey protein is if you order through bodybuilding.com, they have a return policy for no questions asked. So basically, I have returned protein powders that I thought tasted awful. I had one serving and thought it was a waste of money to have that big container, and they have refunded me my money. So that's the good thing about bodybuilding.com. I hope that you guys liked this video. Please like it if you did. Subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram here. Here's my handle. I am gonna start incorporating more of these glucose testing just because there's a lot of keto products on the market and I'm willing to find out, are they really keto? Are the products that are not being advertised as keto and low carb, are those even good um, substitutions? So I will be doing some more of these. And if you like these type of videos, please comment down below and let me know what you think. Also, if you tried any of these products featured in this video, please let me know what you think of those too. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Of course, the gardener is mowing the lawn.